The season is almost over, Summoners. Aim for that final push to your goal. Hello, Summoners. Welcome back to another Pro Guys video. Like we just mentioned, the rank season is nearly over and we're all trying to rush to our dream ranks. But what if I told you that there are a few tactics that you can use to abuse that final push before the season end? Now, keep in mind that these strategies aren't meant for a ton of games in a row, but rather are meant for some cheesy ways to get some free wins. My name is Nathan Ning, and we're going to be going over the top strategies that you can abuse to rank up fast. Also, make sure to answer today's question of the day in the comments, what has been your favorite cheese strategy throughout the years? Lastly, be sure to check out ProGuides.com where we have the best roster of coaches to help you guys reach your goals by the end of Season 10. There's a special bonus promotion going on which guarantees you to climb 5 divisions in 5 months or will give you an additional 5 months for free. Check it out using the link below. To start things off, let's begin with the most controversial of all strategies. That's right, Summoners, we're going to be talking about funneling. Now, I personally don't condone nor respect players that use this strategy. This is still going to be on the list because it is an easy way to get a win, if you have no dignity. Funneling is a strategy that many have to run into at least once in their games. In essence, it's the act of picking a hyper carry in the jungle and then having the support mid lane. The entire purpose is to have the support give up all of their lane experience and gold to their jungler so they can go ahead and have a high amount of gold and levels, thus 1v9 the game. This tactic is usually done with the Enteric, but Karthus and Leona are another funnel duo that are rarely seen in NA but are still abused. Let's go over a quick rundown for the Master Yi and Taric funnel. As you guys may know, this can be done with Leon and Karthus as well. For Yi Taric, you want Master Yi to take Flash and Smite, and you want Taric to take Heal and Exhaust. Yi's runes are fairly flexible, but Taric's tend to run the Guardian and Ultimate Hunter. For Yi's early game, you want to have a full clear on your bot side and hit level 3. By this time, the mid wave should be crashing, and you should go in and catch it, maybe even pick up a kill. Taric should be attempting to safely hold the wave if possible. After catching Midwave, you should look for a clear on both Scuttles if possible, and if not, take one Scuttle and then finish clearing the rest of your camps. Check your map. If the mid lane is crashing at your turret again, go and pick it up before you recall. After this, just rinse and repeat until clearing your camps alongside going mid. You don't want to gank often, but if you find a free gank, go for it. Your overall goal is to have extremely high CS and scale to the late game so you can 1v9. A major part of this is securing as many dragons as possible. Alright, with funneling out of the way, let's go into our next strategy. This strategy isn't as complicated and it's something that tends to hard tilt players when it happens to them, as some of you guys may know to your friends when they get invaded. We're going to be talking about level 1 invading. Keep in mind that invading tends to need some CC unless you late invade. A late invade means that you'll be taking these paths halfway and then sitting in a bush before fully running in around 122. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin with the bot side invade. The blue path represents the path where you should be taking if you're blue team and invading the red side. The red of course means that you should take it if you're the red side and invading blue side. The reason why these paths are so close to the wall is to avoid vision for as long as possible so the enemy has less time to react. Whoever has a long range CC should go in first, so this is a better time for any of you guys to pick up Blitzcrank. Be sure to tightly follow the path and then drop a ward where the green dot is in case the enemy is sitting in there so you'll be able to react in time to CC them. Next, we have the invades around the mid lane, and the same rules apply as the previous invade path. There is no particular preference on which invade to do, as they'll all be spontaneous to the enemy. Just attempt to assume where the enemy may be in positioning due to their jungler starting there. Finally, we have the top side invade paths. These tend to catch the enemy's top laners completely off guard, as they never seem to expect it. Sometimes you may even run into the jungler and then get a double kill. Another great strategy that you can do is to duo abuse bot lane, especially level 2 advantage as well as playing the kill lane. This type of duo can work in mid and jungle as well, but it's a different type of dynamic. Nonetheless, if you have a duo you can make this work with, it's completely worth it. We'll be covering 3 tips with this types of duo, level 2 advantage, killing pressure usage, and level 1 cheese. First up, we got the standard level 2 advantage strategy. This strategy revolves around you and your duo hitting the minions first, so you can hit level 2 first. In the bot lane, they hit level 2 after a wave and a half of minions. Be sure that before the last minion dies, you can begin to position to kill your enemies so that your level 2 will catch them by surprise. This tends to lead to an early kill and then get you to snowball to your next tip. When you're playing a kill lane such as Pantheon with Samira or Lucian with Nautilus, you tend to have a lot of kill pressure over your enemy. Use this pressure to your advantage by putting up some wards in the enemy jungle and killing them if you see them. This will tilt the enemy out of their minds and then tend to create some fighting within the enemy team. It's a pretty big bonus if you kill their bot lane right after. For our last bot lane duo tip, we have the standard level 1 cheese. This is best if you have two champions that are extremely powerful at level 1. To prepare for this cheese, you need your jungler to either not need a leash or for them to go for a gank right after their buff. If you're not leashing, sit in the river brush or the tri brush depending on what team that you're on. 
and then attempt to kill the enemy to a bot lane when they walk into that bush. If you have a hard CC level 1, then your jungler agrees to come gank after the buff, walk normally to lane, and then engage hard on the enemy bot lane for some free summoner spells and maybe even free kills. On top of these small advantages, it tends to cause the enemy the mental boom, especially if you reportedly kill them in the bot lane. If they died more than 3 times, the jungler will most likely become more frustrated. Just think back to all those games where you see an ally constantly feeding. I just get tilted thinking about it. Our next tactic may not seem like anything insane, and you may think to yourself, don't people do that anyway? Well, yeah, kind of. We're going to be looking at roams and gangs as a mid laner and at times even as an ADC. This tactic revolves a lot around constantly being a pain for the enemy jungler and laner due to always being there for either killing them or just dealing some damage. As ADC, you can sometimes find a free kill on the enemy jungle or even enemy mid laner and it tends to find them tilting and then asking their team why they didn't come to help. As a mid laner, you can impact every single lane and if you're really feeling committed, ditch your wave and then go for a free kill. It's a little bit of a coin flip, but if you come out on top, not only do you get free money to spend, but you gain an advantage in the mental battle between the teams. Always keep in mind how you can impact the map, even if it's just showing up for a few seconds. And all of this kind of leads up to our last strategy. Our last strategy being mental fortitude. This is not something that you can really abuse, but rather something that can keep you in tip top shape to use these tactics or just to feel good about the games. This tactic is merely mental fortitude and strength. This is the concept of keeping yourself focused as much as possible and free from distraction. If you're looking to truly climb, you need to understand a few things, so let's go over them. 1. Losing is okay. You'll climb faster if you play to improve rather than winning. Although, admittedly winning is more fun. 2. You need games to climb. Having less than 100 games won't get you out of bronze into gold. Understand if you play these games perfectly, climbing takes an immense amount of games and don't feel discouraged if you're not climbing after a long period of time. 3. It's not really a team gap. I understand there's a lot of times where you feel like you had no control over the game, and those games do happen every so often, and they happen to everyone. But the important thing is understanding that you could have made a difference. Blaming your team for every single thing will never fix your problems. Work on yourself, and I promise you'll see change. 4. Don't play on losing streaks. We've all been there. You just finished climbing to gold 1 yesterday after a long grind, and today you went zero 5 and demoted back down to gold 2. Learn to stop that in its tracks. If you play a few games and see it may not be your day, just call it off. Grab Boba, go for a walk with a mask on, and just maybe play a different game. There's nothing wrong with stopping after a few losses, plus you'll love yourself for it later. This leads us up to our next point. 5. Take breaks and feel good. Climbing is extremely difficult and it may take a lot of your focus. A really good idea is playing a few tryhard games where you use 100% of your focus on the game, then afterwards just play some normals or an ARAM or maybe even an Earth. You can't play amazing 100% of the time, so ratchet your ability to be amazing and then use it to gain LP. Once you use all your energy, just call it there. Sure, you may climb slightly slower, but it will look and feel significantly better. 6. Finally, stay sane. I know, I know, this is kind of an exaggerated point, but League of Legends is stressful at times and it can tilt you pretty hard. Sure, some of you guys don't actually lose your sanity, but understand that sometimes you just need to relax away from ranks and then just take care of yourself. Keeping your mental strong throughout many tough games is one of the hardest parts about climbing. Take it one step at a time and keep your mental strong as I can assure you that you'll be able to climb in no time. And yes, this does mean not being toxic to your teammates and not letting them tilt you. 7. My own personal recommendation for you is to slash mute all. If your teammates have nothing productive to say and you can tell usually by the 5 seconds that you're into a game, slash mute all because they are not going to be helping you in any way. And that pretty much sums up our video. Don't forget to join ProGuides family at ProGuides.com or go through our Discord with the link down below. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so go ahead and stay tuned. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, and one more final tip that's not in this video or this not in the script. Disregard girls and boys and get Yilo. It's, it's simple. Do it. Trust me. That's why I'm single. I know that is the reason why. <clears throat> anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace. Thank you